factories housed machinery that was either too large or too expensive or both to be used in home production or that used power sources like steam or water power that weren't available to all small scale producers. The machines themselves usually displaced workers, like when the water powered looms of New Lanark destroyed the careers of hand loom weavers by producing large quantities of cloth at lower costs that the weavers couldn't match. However, the new industries also created new jobs and often, although it took fewer people to weave a given amount of cloth using this new technology, the new industries were usually producing products for much larger, sometimes even global markets. So much cloth was made in the new textile centers like New Lanark in Scotland or Lowell in America that there were often a lot of new jobs, sometimes more than had previously been available in that region. The new factory jobs required less skill than artisanal craft work, especially when the worker was making a larger number of standardized products. Previously, a carpenter needed to be a pretty skilled craftsman to design and assemble a custom built chair. But with industrialization, a less skilled lathe operator could turn large quantities of legs that could then be assembled into any number of chairs of a standard pattern. Workers doing these lower skilled jobs became in a way just as standardized as the things that they made and they could be employed at much lower cost. While more people might be working in a new factory compared to an old-fashioned craft workshop, each worker's wages would almost always be lower. And starting a factory wasn't the same thing as starting a craft workshop. It was no longer a slow, organic process where an apprentice would become a master craftsman and then develop a clientele and open his own business and then hire a few workers or apprentices of his own. The people who started factories were often not even experts at the processes that the factories were going to do. They were capitalists and investors who had access to large sums of money that were needed to build a factory and fill it with technology and with workers. A new class of owners group who had little or no connection to the jobs being done or really also to the workers that they employed. American inventor Eli Whitney, who lived from 1765 to 1825, is remembered mostly for inventing the cotton gin which removed the seeds from cotton fiber much more quickly than they could be picked out by hand. The cotton gin helped to propel the American South into world leadership in raw cotton. By the 1850s, American plantations supplied 80 to 90% of the world's cotton market. But Whitney's most important contribution to industrialization was his technique for using machine tools to produce interchangeable parts for firearms. With Whitney's standardized machined parts, it no longer took a skilled gunsmith to build a weapon. Anybody with basic skills could assemble and could also disassemble and repair and maintain a rifle or a handgun. Weapons became more reliable and the technique was quickly applied to other industries. Of course, since most of the intelligence in the job had been moved from the craftsman into the machine, the machine gradually became more valuable and the machine operator less. Whitney's process made guns more reliable and less expensive, but he turned not only the gun parts into interchangeable parts, but also the factory employees themselves. The process continues today. In the Tesla car factory, for example, robots running sophisticated software do a lot of the skilled tasks like welding, while a smaller number of human workers spend most of their time moving assemblies from place to place or programming the robots. So a question for discussion. How does technology affect workers and their jobs?